There are some pieces of camera gear that you can't buy online. You have to make it yourself. So I bought a 3D printer and I wanna show you what I made. The first thing that I really wanted to print was my own custom lens caps. Cause you know how it is, you go over to your Pelican or camera bag, crack it open and look in there and all the lenses look exactly the same. You're just looking at all these plain black caps. I see some guys grab tape and I don't have any white gaffers tape on me today. So I'll just be using you know, a little bit of masking tape and just, you know, sharpie it on there. Obviously it's not pretty, but it definitely does the job. And other guys will just take, you know, a label maker. It's a little bit more professional, but I wanted something that looked much more aesthetically pleasing and wouldn't peel up and come off over time. So I got on Thingiverse, and if you're not familiar with 3D printing, it's basically a website with thousands of 3D print files on there that you can download and try out. So I started trying out different Canon EF lens mount back caps, and this is one of the first ones that I tried. I just printed it really, really small so I could just see if my theory and concept would work. Just put a little 50 millimeter on there, and it's really cute, and it works. So I printed it big, and actually in black this time, and it came out pretty decent, but it wasn't really my favorite design. So I actually landed on a design that I liked a lot more. So I got this one from a user on there called Alwa, and I'll link him down below. But I customized his design and added all different focal lengths to the back. Now, if you're familiar with 3D printers, you'll know that they can only print in one filament color at once, at least most of them. There are some that have what they call a dual extruder and it can do two different filament colors in one single file. And they're even coming out with this newer thing called the palette. And I think it does like up to eight different colors, which is just crazy, but I didn't know that. And I only bought one that can do one color at a time. So on this first lens cap that I printed all in black, I just tried painting it with white acrylic paint kind of in the recess here where I indented the lettering, but it just turned out really muddy and ugly. So I realized I have to switch out the filament mid print. So in order to do that, you have to go into the software and basically pause the print at just the right layer where the text is gonna show up and then change out the filament color. So here's really one of the first successful ones that I did. Did a couple other ones that printed okay, but some of them just failed or weren't the exact right size. And it's permanent. It's not like tape. It's not gonna peel off or scratch off or anything like that over time. It's always gonna look really good, clean, and super high contrast. So when I open my bag, I know exactly which lens I'm grabbing as long as I put the lens cap back on the right lens. So once I got the 50 millimeter lens cap down, of course I had to print it out in all the other Canon EF lens mount lenses that I had. In the future, I do plan on making these for all of my Sony E-mount and Fuji mount lenses as well, but this was a really good starting spot. So I've actually put all the STL files for these custom lens caps on my website and you can download them for free or leave a small donation if you wanna help support the channel. So definitely check out the link below. I have a few other ones like 135 and 35 millimeters linked there also. This next print is a really useful one I found from a guy named Mitchell Fanta. And this is a tool that I never even knew existed but it's definitely something I've always needed. So what it is, is actually a filter remover. And I don't know if you've had this problem, but I definitely have. And let's grab a lens here so I can you know, demonstrate. So if you're like me, you probably use filters all the time, like Black Pro Mist and ND filters. And once you get that filter threaded onto the lens, it may never want to come off again. And it decides to just merge and become one with your lens. But Obviously that's a problem when you need to use that filter on a different lens. So that's where this thing comes in handy and I printed it off in this bright orange because I thought it'd make it easy to find it in a bag or case and I just kind of like bright orange. So then obviously you just grip it and turn it lefty loosey and it comes off nice and easy. So when I printed this out, I just grabbed the G code file that they had, threw it in my printer and started printing it out right away. I didn't actually slice it myself and so it actually caused a lot of stringing, basically little teeny pieces of plastic going between this whole thing and it ended up looking like really hairy when it was done. So I had to trim all that off and just cut it off and make it look a lot nicer. So you definitely wanna slice the STL file yourself so that it comes out nice and clean on your own 3D printer. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, I'll be using just a bit of 3D printing jargon, but you can figure it out quickly with a Google search. And trust me, I had no idea 
what I was doing when I first got this 3D printer. This next one is another one that I found on Thingiverse from a guy named Trevor Williamson. And this is one that's really great for people to do a lot of editing. So basically, it's a little external hard drive caddy for all of your portable external hard drives. So if you're like me, you've got a bunch of these laying around on your desk and they just take up a bunch of space. And so I wanted to get them all stacked up. So you print out these different caddies and of course I had to do it in the bright orange again. It kind of has that lacy hard drive look that I like. So he has a standard one and then he has one that is a plus one millimeter, which is the one I recommend printing because it does a lot better at fitting these. They fit together really nicely with these simple little dovetails. So I'll just snap these together now. Okay, now let's slide in my hard drives. <laughs> and boom, just like that, it's really clean. And you can see how that looks from the front. And you can actually stack these up pretty much indefinitely because it uses this nice dovetail design to just all snap together. So I'll definitely be adding more of these. And then I love how all the cables just come out the back and you could like Velcro this and make it really nice and clean and neat. This next one that I found also on Thingiverse from a guy named Mathis G is absolutely ingenious. So if you use a D-tab splitter like I have here, this is gonna be a game changer for you. So typically what I've done to mount this to my rig is I've put a little bit of Velcro on the back of it here. And then on my little V-mount plate, I've also put Velcro in a few different spots depending on where I need it. And then I just stick it on the side. And yeah, that actually works pretty well, but it could get knocked and come off. And it's just really not that great because I don't like putting this you know, sticky backed Velcro on everything. So he actually designed something to modify the D-tap splitter itself and I love it. So we're gonna take the back of the D-tap splitter off and I'm gonna take it apart right now. So what he's done is actually design a matching back plate to the original, but it has a little spot for mounting a quarter 20 thread. Ha ha ha, ingenious, I love it. I could put this one to the side and then put his right in place and put those screws right in. And it just has a nice tight fit. You can already see it doesn't even fall off without screws or anything. It's a perfect snug fit. Okay, now we just need to grab a quarter 20 thread and then I'm gonna put it through this opening here. And then you can mount this really anywhere on your rig that you have a quarter 20 thread. So I'm gonna put it right here on the side. And it does have space for two quarter 20 threads if you wanna make it even more secure. But honestly, this is really steady just on its own. Now on the side of my camera rig, I have four more D-tap connections available to me and a really clean solution that's not going anywhere. And then I can simply run this back to my V-mount battery wherever it's mounted on my rig. Okay, this final one, I'm just gonna tease because I'm actually gonna make an entire video about it. And it is this 3D printed platform for a C-stand and a 360 degree rig. And I got inspired by Austin Paul's own 360 rig and I made a few adjustments to it and actually made my own design file. So I'll be showing you a lot more about this in an upcoming video. Thanks for the idea, Austin. If you've been thinking about getting into 3D printing, I definitely recommend it. It's a ton of fun. Yeah, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but that's what YouTube's for, right? You can really learn anything on YouTube today. And honestly, there's nothing cooler than coming up with an idea and then printing it out and bringing it into the real physical world and being able to hold it, touch it, use it, and everything like that. It's amazing. And guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now, because I have a ton more videos coming out on shooting, editing, lighting, and now even 3D printing where it relates to filmmaking. All right, I'll see you in the next video.